Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kelvin Johnson. This is Windows 11 tutorial inside out part 15. In this tutorial, I'll be discussing about Windows security and privacy. So we are going to go deep into Windows security. I'll be discussing about the UAE, which is called the user's account control. I'll, I'm also going to go deep into teaching you about firewall and then I'm going to teach about the BitLocker and lastly I'll be discussing about the Windows Registry. So we're going to examine the types of threats you are likely to face at home or at your office. More importantly, we, 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 we are going to describe some of the more significant security improvements which have been, which have been made in Microsoft Windows 11. So beginning with, 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 the, uh, with the version 1703 that was a Windows 10, um, Microsoft actually included a new modern app that functions as a dashboard for common security functions. So if I go to my Windows 11 device and here you can see on my taskbar, if I go to the show hidden icons, you can see I have, on here I can have some more um, um, actions actually for example i have my windows security it says action needed and you can see i'm actually i've already installed an avj antivirus it's actually the free version which i installed so if i double click on this windows security you can see here i have a dash i have a dashboard which says security at a glance so it gives me actually a clue of what uh, of the different kind of security which I actually configured on my device and here if you look at, at, at my left at my left hand side you can see we have we have the vir virus and threat protection so we also have you can see the account protections we have the firewall and network protection and the app and browser control device security we have device performance and health we also have the family options and here we can see you can see we have the protection history so let's start with the virus and threat protection so you know one of the most important thing actually when you, when you bought a new device, it's actually to make sure that your device is secured. So your device is actually secured. Most of the time when you buy a new device, it's actually, it, actually, it actually comes with a basic antivirus system. But sometimes it comes with a trial period, for example, like with uh, um, antivirus of McAfee, which is only going to, um, going, to valid, going to be valid for like three months. So after three months, you'll be asked to purchase a licensed um, version of that antivirus system. But you can always go to the internet and download um, some free um, version or some freeware antivirus system. Here you can see I've installed anti at the AVJ antivirus. So let me go to the let me just open um, Microsoft Edge and let me show you where you can actually download the different antivirus version you have, which are actually free. So and I I'm going to actually search for Ninite. And uh, if I click on Ninite, you say install. And uh, here you can install with Ninite. You can install multiple apps at the same time. Here you can see we can install the different apps if we uh, that we need. But I'm actually interested in security. Here you can see on our security we have the different antivirus, um, which of course all these are actually freeware. But definitely you can actually purchase this freeware if you think the. Um, the free version is not enough. I'm going to go into my uh, IVG antivirus and show you the basic um, protection I have and if we purchase the um, AVG, which other protection we are going to get by going for the full version. Here you can see we have the different uh, security system. We have like the essential, the mal malware bytes, we have the um, Avast, AVG, Spybot 2, Avira and the Super Anti-Spyware. So I actually installed the AVJ on this machine. It's actually a virtual machine I'm using because I've been using AVJ for a very long time. I'm also using it on my physical laptop and also on my server. And here you can see we have the um, mal malware bytes, the malware bytes, and also the Avast. So you can actually, actually install this as well. So what you can actually just do is just click on this, one of these soft, um, security software and also other software that you need to install. And scroll down and then click get your Ninite. So by getting your Ninite, it's going to install. So if you just if you select, for example, I select Chrome, Zoom, VLC, Dropbox. So it's going to install all the software at one time. So you don't need to actually install them differently. Going to the different website browser to actually install this software. So that's what I, what I love about Ninite. 
so let me just close my browser and so if I click on virus and threat protection here you can see it says and the RVJ antivirus is turned on and it says, you can see that it says current threat no action needed protection settings you can see there are no action needed so I can actually click on to open the apps which will take me to my RVJ but here you can see we have the current threat so we have you see the there is no current threat at the moment and we can actually do a quick scan to actually scan my device here you see scan options i can click on scan options to see we have the quick scan the full scan the custom scan and the microsoft defender offline scan so by doing the quick scan i can just click scan now and just scan my device and here we see we have the virus and threat protection settings we can actually click on money settings which is going to take me you can see the read time Protection, return protection is off, leaving your device vulnerable. Let's try, let's try to turn this on. So I can turn this on. But right now it's being turned off. Well, this device is actually a virtual machine, so not everything is going to work perfectly on it. And here, if I if I scroll down, you can see we have the temper protection is actually turned on. Prevent others from tempering with important security features. And here we have um, Microsoft Defender Antivirus won't scan items that have been excluded. So we can actually add or remove exclusion. Let's click yes. So here we can add exclusions of what we want to actually scan. For example, I can just click on a folder. So straight we try to open a folder. And let me just go to under my document. Let me see. Um okay, let me just, just select this new folder as an example. And here you can see that this folder will not be scanned. So when I'm doing a scan here, it will not be scanned. So sometimes you have a situation whereby you have some software that when um, RVG actually scan the device, it will see those apps or those files as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a virus and it will try to delete those files. So by actually adding an exclusion to this, by adding an exclusion, it will actually exclude that folder from doing scan and that file will still be there. So let me go back again here. Let's go back again. So here we have the uh, virus and threat protection updates. You can see security, security intelligence is up to date. And here we have the ransomware protection. It says no action needed. We can actually click on the manage ransomware protection. You can see ransomware protection. Protect your files against threat like ransomware and see how to restore files in case of attack. So at this moment we don't have any ransomware. Because I just installed the AVJ. The virus not quite long ago. And here we have the Microsoft Defender antivirus options. So let me click on that and scroll down a little bit. As you can see, it's actually turned on. It says you can keep using your current provider and have Microsoft Defender antivirus protocol check for threats. So I just actually put this on not quite long ago to actually scan my device um, for threats. But if you don't have AVJ installed on your Windows 11 device, the Microsoft Defender is gives you also the basis um, basis security your device also needs so if you don't have any anti antivirus installed on your device don't worry the Microsoft Defender antivirus will also protect your device but it's going to give you the basic um, protection that you require so right let me just try to go back again and here you can see we have account protection say dynamic lock is not working because Bluetooth is off so just like I said before this device is a virtual machine and the Bluetooth will definitely not work so if I go to my let me just go to my settings just go to try to go to search Version. Windows version. You can see I'm using actually a Windows 11 version 21H2. And if I go to MS Info 32, here we can go to my let me go to my system system information. So you can see I'm using actually a Microsoft Windows 11 Pro. And if I scroll down, you can see that my system manufacturer is a VMware, so if, uh, the system model is actually a VMware virtual platform so i'm actually using a vmware machine on the device so that's why i cannot turn on the bluetooth and you can see since the account protection will not be turned on because 
the um, Bluetooth is off. Well, let me let me just try to go back again to my Windows because I also have Windows 11 on my physical laptop device which I'm using to actually record this training. So let me try to open my um, security at a glance on my physical laptop. So let me just move it to the screen, to the recording screen. Here you can see if I move the security at a glance from my um, physical laptop to the screen, you can see it says the account protection actually turned off. Why? Because I don't have a pair, uh, I didn't pair any uh, phone on this device. So here you see it says the dynamic lock is not working because Bluetooth is off. But here I've already, the dynamic lock is actually, it's not, it's not working because there's no paired phone so i was actually i am being asked every time i put on my device to actually pair the phone pair the phone to this device which I, which I can use to lock my screen but i have not actually paired that uh, my device my phone uh, to this device so also we have the firewall and network protection i'm going to go actually go deep into firewall later on and here we have the app and browser control so let me click on the app and browser control here you can see the app protection and online security here it says this is this settings protect your device from malicious and potential unwanted apps files and website and here you can see exploit protection is built into windows 11 to help protect the device against attacked here we can actually click on explore protection settings you can see we have the current flow guard is turned on it's actually the data execution prevention is actually turned on as well and here we have the first ra randomization of for image it's also turned on and you can see they are all turned on which of course is very very important that this is turned on for your device if not your device will be vulnerable to the ransomware that can be installed on your device so let me go back again to my security at a glance and here we have the device security at the moment it says security that comes built in to your device core isolation virtualization based security protects the core part of your device so let me click on the core solution details solution details here it says a memory in, in, um, integrity prevents attack from inserting malicious code into high security process so let me try to turn this on let's see if it's going to be turned on so I'm to check for incompatibility drivers you can see this is actually turned on it says we need to actually restart to apply the protect, uh, protection changes so i'm going to actually restart my device later you see this change requires you to restart the device so let me go back again and here we also have the device performance and health so no action is needed and you can see this my health report so i have my storage capacity i have no issues for app and software we have no issues so windows time service we have no issues sometimes they start fresh with a clean and up-to-date installation of windows to so keep your personal files and some window settings and remove some of your apps so in case you are having issues you can always do a fresh start with which will um, actually reinstall your device but can also keep your files if you want them to be kept and also if i go to the family options here you can see we have the option called manage how your family uses this the, the, their devices so you know if you have a child at home you can actually allow your child to use your laptop but that child should actually have his own personal account of course by actually logging in as a, as, as a child and if your device recognizes that account as a child account it will actually prevent that child from doing a lot of things for example installing software unnecessarily visiting some websites that are not allowed so it's going to actually protect it gives you the ultimate ultimate protection for that child so let me just click on family options and here it says help protect your kids online choose which website your kids can visit as they explore the web using microsoft edge we can also set good screen time habits choose when and how much time your kids can use their device so as you can see we can actually keep track of your child's digital life so, but the issue is this we need to go to the view family settings if i click on that it's going to take me to, to the browser and here you can see I will actually say, re, say reimagine the family experience. So here you can see set screen time limits to so block inappropriate content, active reports, find your family. So you can see we can do a lot of things here. You can actually learn how to do these stuffs. So let me just let me minimize this. And here it says see your family device at a glance. So if I click view devi devices, definitely it will take me to the Microsoft 
where I will need to actually log on and see which device my family have logged on. But for you to be able to, for your child to be able to log into this device, and your device will be recognized, your device will recognize that account as a child account. Your child need to be able, you, you will need to create a Microsoft account for that child. And during the creation of that account, you're going to select that it belongs to a child not an adult so when a child uses that device when a child logs in with that account definitely that account will be seen as a child account and not as an adult account so let me just go back again and let me go back into my security class here you can see we have what we call the protection history if i click on the protection history at this moment we don't have any history available so let me just go back again to my security so I'm going to come back again later to firewall but let me just actually discuss right now some of the threats your device can actually face when you are using Windows 11 or you are using Windows 10 so for example we have what we call the, a, a, the password stealer so a password stealer this runs uh, at, at the background of your device so it actually it can actually gather um, users names and password and forward them to an outside attacker so the stolen, the stolen credential can be then be used to make purchase or, or clean out your bank accounts and even commit identity theft. So we also have phishing attacks. So with, with the use of social engineering to convince visitors to give away their signing credentials as a separate but potential devastating avenue to identify that, that identify theft that can strike in any browser using an operating system so someone can actually send you a link to register for for example to register for a special for specific software or if because it happens once in my at, at my workplace when i was working for a company as a consultant the director of that company was actually sent uh, i think it was sent a sharepoint link to register for for i think for a forum so but he will need to use his email address and his password but he never knew that the password and his email address is being seen by the attacker so what they did is actually they make they created a website a kind of a, a sharepoint site which is actually all everything is actually in a plain text so when my the director is trying to enter his email address and his password the user sees everything and immediately they were able to assess his account they sign it to his to his device and when they sign it to his device they begin to send a personal email to his set to her to his secretary to actually make some cash some cash amount to a different account so the, i think this, the secretary was very smart enough to ask the director to say well did, are you the one that sent this email because the test in the email the email doesn't look like an email that you will send but i don't want to mention the country where that email came from i was um so i went to actually i went to office 365 and check the signing record of that director so i was able to detect that the signing came from a country i don't want to mention a name probably most of us know which country is that so it came from a country and i see that um different and even even they were able to log into the in the united states in england and some other two countries actually which i'm not going to mention the name and um so that's actually, actually terrible so what, what we did is we blocked that account changed his password and actually configured the multi-factor authenticator for that director because at that moment the company was actually trying to introduce multi-factor authenticator which of course i wish they have multi-factor authenticator definitely the user will not have been able to access his um, email address so it is very very important if you uh, have the opportunity like me um all my email address i have hotmail gmail i'm using multi-factor authenticator so before anyone can sign in to my hotmail account so that person would definitely need to have my mobile device for him or her to log on to my email account and also we have some security settings which are actually be configured in windows 10 and windows 11. so these security features actually makes windows very secure for example you know in the past we always use bios but at this moment we um bios is not being used anymore we, we use like what we call the, the unified extensible firmware interface as the uefi so the uefi is actually a firmware interface that replaced the bios which has been a part of every pc since the beginning of personal computing and also we also have what we call the trusted platform 
model that is the TPM. So if you have been working with Windows 11 or if you've tried to install Windows 11 on your device or try to upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11, you will know that one of the requirements from Microsoft is TPM. Your device should be configured with TPM version 2.0. This is actually stated, this is actually a criteria or uh, for a reason why because Microsoft wants to guarantee some extra security for your device. So a TPM is a hardware chip that facilitates encryptions and prevents altering or expulsion encryption keys and certificate. So when you actually encrypt your device with like for example BitLocker or like encrypting tool, so the TPM actually makes it very difficult for someone to actually uh, modify your hardware device without having that certificate or encryption key to be able to modify your hardware. So if you uh, configure BitLocker on your device and you want to actually modify the hardware, you don't have the key, I'm sorry, you will not be able to modify that hardware on your device. And also we also have what we call the secure boot. The secure boot is a basic feature of the UEFI. It prevents the use of on of any alternative operating system loader. So only an operating system loader that, that is digitally signed using a, using a certificate stored by UEFI is allowed to run on your Windows 11 device. So now let me actually discuss about securing data. Well, it says the increased mobility of PCs also increase the risk of theft. So losing a computer is bad enough, but handing over all the data you have stored on your computer is potentially a much greater loss than the device itself. So it happened, I think, about six years ago when I was working for a company and the, the company was actually organizing a party and it says, okay, everyone should come to the party, but from our workplace directly to that party. So everyone took, took their personal laptop with them and put it in the car. I think some group of people noticed that, okay, well, these people are organizing the party. They are just the party started, I think, around five o'clock in the evening. Definitely, they will be coming from their work. So they now went to, I think, about 14 laptops were stolen that day. They just went and started breaking into the cars and stealing the laptops. But the problem is not stealing the laptop, is, is the problem because the laptop is, you can always purchase a new laptop. But the data that these people are going to steal from that laptop is more important than the laptop itself. So the laptop may cost about a thousand euro. Or 800 or 1500 euro, but the data in that laptop worth millions of euro. So, if someone could have access to very vital information, definitely they could do a lot of damage. Because I was working for actually a pharmaceutical company, and um, I think so. If you could have access to those information in that laptop, definitely they could use that information to do some damages to that company. So, it is actually very, very important that you actually secure your device. So if I go to my, let me just, let me open File Explorer. If I open File Explorer, you can see we have, let me go to this PC. You can see we have our C drive and I have here on that drive called the software M drive. At this moment, this, 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 this drive is not secured with BitLocker. So if I right click on the C drive and I go to here, you can see we have the option to turn BitLocker on. If I go to show more options, here you can see we can actually turn BitLocker on. But if I click turn BitLocker on, let me show you why I said but you can see we received this um, error message that this device cannot use cannot use a trusted platform model. Your administrator must set the allow BitLocker without a compatible TPM. So I will actually need to configure a GPO which will allow me to set BitLocker on this device. But if I go, let me bring my physical device. And if I go to my physical device, this is my physical device, the C, C drive of my physical device as my laptop. You can see that BitLocker is actually configured on this drive. So if I right click and I go to show more options, you can see it says manage BitLocker. So let me click on manage BitLocker. You can see we have the options actually suspend protection, we can turn off BitLocker. We can back up our recovery key. Suspend protection means that you want to actually suspend protection protection on this device. So which means that BitLocker will not be turned off, but it should, it should actually be suspended. And you can see we can actually back up our recovery key. In the case you lost your recovery key, you have the opportunity to back it up before something goes wrong. So it's very, very important you have your recovery key 
somewhere safe because i have my recovery key actually on the usb drive and kept it somewhere should the case something go wrong i should be able to actually get my recovery key and you know be able to log on back again to my device and you can see it says here remove remove removable data drives bit locker to go so at this moment let me just insert a usb drive so if I insert a USB drive, you can see I just insert a removable drive. Just close that, and here it says the bit locker is off. So I can I can have the opportunity to actually turn the bit locker on if I want to do that. At this moment, if I bring this here, you can see it says choose how you want to unlock this drive. I can use my password, or I say use my smart card to unlock this to drive so you will need to insert your smart card of course to your device but we can actually use a password if we wish we we'll enter our password click next next and then uh usb drive will also be configured with a bit locker so let me just close this and then close this as well and also if i go to my c drive and i right click on my c drive and i go to show more options here you can see we have the op we have the option to actually scan selected items for virus. So I can I can actually scan my device and see if I have any virus on this device. I can actually do the same for the USB drive. To show more options. Here we can scan selected items for virus to see if there are any virus on this device. So it's actually trying to scan this device to see if there are any other virus on this device you can see it's about two percent now but i'm going to stop this at the moment um scan stopped okay let me just cancel that so that is how you actually scan your device to see if there are virus on this device you can actually also scan a folder as well so let me just let me close this because that was actually the file explorer from my laptop uh, for my physical laptop and so if i go to the show hidden icon on this windows 11 virtual device can see I can double click on the FVG antivirus I installed so you can see I actually installed the basic um, FVG antivirus which is free you can always use this as long as you wish so but it gives me the basic protection which if you are someone actually just saw the internet use your web and email and nothing more I think is that is more than enough if you are working for a company the FVG, the free version is not is not enough. You definitely want to install a paid version on devices which um, if you are working for a company. So you say you say you can see it says you have the basic protection. Uh, the basic if I need to go for the full protection, say for example it says um, hackers attack, keep your hackers off your PC, protect your uh, yourself from snoops, and also payments not protected, shop and bank safer online so all these are not protected but it says stop threat in real time so block web and email threat you can see i have the option to actually run smart scan and we can go to more options here we can do a deep scan we can actually scan the usb the the drive performance scan we can also schedule the scan and we can see our scan history and you can see it says upgrade to full protection I have the option to actually upgrade now to a full protection which of course will give me more option to protect my device than just using the simple basic protection so let me just close that now and also let me minimize this so at this moment i want to actually discuss about the user's account control so probably most of you know about the uac so if i go to let me go to my start menu and I try to open a registry, registry editor, double click. You can see we are receiving the UAC, which is the user account control. So it's going to actually request me to say, do you want to do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Then I'll say yes. So let me explain. He said the the U the, the USA works actually in conjunction with with the future, which is called the mandatory integra integrity control which assigns a measure of trust called an in integrity level to every system object including processing and registering keys so processes that run 
and the system integrity level cannot be directly accessed by any user account. So someone with, a, with, with just an ordinary user account with a basic user account will not be able to run the registry. He will actually receive the, um, this user control and says access denied. And if it, if he or, he or she opens the registry, he will not be able to modify or edit the registry. And also, if you try to open, for example, open a program as an administrator, it's also also going to actually require the user's account control. And if you don't have the access, as if you don't have the right as an administrator, definitely you will not be able to launch that file. So let me just click yes. You can see that I'm able to open the registry data. So the question is actually now is what actually triggers the UAC, that's a user's account control. So the type of action that actually requires elevation to administrator status and therefore display the UAC elevation prompt include those that make changes to the system settings or to the file in the system, in the, in the system routes or program files. So in the default Windows installation, these environment variables represent the C windows or the C program files respectively. So among the actions that require elevations are the following one. If you are trying to install or uninstall apps from your um, desktop, from your, from your device, or explicitly accept those converted into apps package and delivered through the Microsoft Store. So installing dri device drivers that are not included in Windows or provided through Windows Update. And also installing Active S Control or changing settings for Windows uh, for the Windows Defender firewall and also configuring Windows Update will also trigger the UAC. And also if you are trying to actually change a user's account type or try to schedule the task, uh, run a task scheduler or for example just what we just did, edit the registry, definitely you're going to get that, you're, you're going to get the prompt of the UAC. So let me show you how to actually modify the USA. So if you want to actually stop yourself from getting a prompt, let me show you how to do that. So first of all, we need to go to our search and then look, go to control panel. So in control panel, you can see that I've changed my, when you open control panel for the first time, you're going to get your everything, your icons in category. So I've changed mine to actually large icons which I love the way just everything is being displayed and also we have to go to users user account so in user account you can see we have the option called change user account control settings so click on that Here you can see it says choose when to be notified about changes to your computer so let me close the registry so if I take this down it says never notify me when applications try to install software or make changes to my computer. Well, this is not recommended and I would advise you never to do this. So I'm going to say OK. So it's definitely going to ask for your user's account to control. Click yes. And then if I go to the registry, and I try to open the registry editor, editor, you can see I'm not being actually requested to, um, for the, I'm not being requested to actually click OK for the user's account. Control. But if I close that and I change it back again to the default, change it back to the default, click OK, and I go to the registry, and you can see now I'm being prompted back to, to open the user's account control, and I'll click yes, and it's going to take me to my to the registry editor. So let me close the registry editor. So close this and then close this as well. Okay, let me just leave this open. So I want to actually discuss about the firewall and network protection. So if you are working for a company as a network engineer, definitely you will understand what the firewall is. But the firewall is very, very important on your Windows 11 and Windows 10 device and also for the Windows Server. So definitely if you are working for a company, you are going to be using a firewall that has a firewall from Cisco to protect your device offers firewall from HP or from other vendors. It's actually in the, um, it's kind of a physical device which works as a firewall itself and definitely you want to install a software 
at server to actually protect your device but in windows 11 we have the inbuilt software firewall which also protects your device here you can see we have the firewall network protection so let me click on that and also and also if i go to my you can see we have the domain network private network we have the public network so you can see they are all on on and on and then you can see that you see the public network is active so the domain network if you if you actually connect the device to, do, to a domain definitely the, your domain network will, will be protected so every the connection between your device and other other device will be protected within your domain network and here we have the private network if i click let me just click on the private network it says network at home or work where you know and trust the people and device on the network and where your device is set as discoverable so if you want other people to actually discover your device they definitely you're going to actually enable the device to be discoverable but if they, with, with a private network on the the, the firewall the microsoft defender firewalls go actually protect your device from being seen by unwanted um, devices that are not in your network range you can see it says it's turned on we can also block all incoming connection including those in the list of allowed apps but i'm not going to actually do that for now and also you can see we have the option we can actually turn all this for example the public network we can actually turn this off you see network is in the public place such as an airport or coffee shop and where your device is set as not discoverable so the public network makes sure that your device is also protected we can also block all incoming connections including those in the list of allowed apps so here if i you can see we have so you can allow an app through firewall so let me click on that So you can see all the app or the private app and the public app which should be allowed you can trust that we have a lot of list here so we can actually go to anyone and then click details you can select an app here and or we can select you know this app and click details it's going to give me details information about the app so here you can see we can actually uncheck one of this app and then on checking it definitely the app will be Locked and also we can decide to just click. Let me just say, let me try to. Here you can see. I think let me change. Oh, I want to click the change settings, and if I click change settings, then I can actually I'll just uncheck it and then click OK. But I don't want to actually click OK. We can actually say all allow another app. We can allow another app here. Browse the, to the part of the app and then allow the app and just click OK. We can add the app to our list. Allowed. So let me just click cancel. And here we have our network and internet troubleshooter. So in the case you are having uh, issues with your network, you can start the network and internet troubleshooter, which will allow you to actually try to troubleshoot that pro problem, and that problem will, will get resolved or not. Which of course is just going to give you the options and tell you, okay, this is the problem we discovered in your device. We can fix this problem, or we are able to resolve or fix this problem. Here we say we have the firewall notification settings. So let me just click on the firewall notification settings. So if there are any kind of intrusion on your device, you're going to get a notification that says, well, okay, there's, uh, there's an intruder, uh, there's someone or some, an app which, which was trying to actually intrude into your device, which you're going to get in, which you're going to notify the notification center. So here's my notification center. You can see I have about some like the Windows security alert. I, I need to restart my device because I modified of my security settings so let me just close that and, back again. and here we have the uh, advanced settings so let me just go to advanced settings so you see it says because definitely i will need to actually click on this um users account control because i want to modify something from the firewall so I'll click yes you can see it opens the advanced firewall security settings so here we have the in inbound and outbound rules so we have some inbound rules as well so if for example you want to block some specific app not to get access to your device or for that app not to have access to the internet you can actually create an inbound rule and also create an outbound, an outbound rule for that device for that device not to actually access the internet or for that device for um, someone not to actually also assess your device or the software not to access your device so a lot of people do it in the past i try to do that if you want to 
block some app or some software which is downloaded from the internet and you don't want that software to actually get updated or that software to be blocked you can actually block it using your firewall so here you just need to what you need to do is you can actually if i go to inbound you can create a new rule and by creating a new rule we can decide to say okay is here a program we want to actually block a port so we want to actually create a custom rule you can just click next and we can say okay at the part of this you can see you can browse to the part of that file for example i can just go to this pc and go to my c drive and let me search for a program that was installed recently let's see if we can have like the avg antivirus Okay, I can say, well, I want to actually block, let me just select this, so that's why I'm actually file, open, you can see, then I'm going to click next, here it says the protocol type, you can actually choose, you can say it's any, and then let me just choose next, it says we can choose any IP address, what are the actions I want to do, I want to actually block the connection, click next, well, when this rules when does this rule apply it's gonna apply for the domain of private and the public you click next and then you create the rule so i don't want to actually create any rule at the moment uh, let me go back again to my advanced here you can see we have some other options and if i click for example we have the firefox you can see the firefox it says the profile is actually we can set the private it's a, um, it's, it says enabled it's yes the action is allowed Over, override is no the remote address is any the U protocol is actually UDP you can see we have just we have some protocol that UDP TCP any you can see we have the ACMP which of course is for networking here yeah, when you try to actually ping um, ping another device it's going to go through the ECMP and also we can see the local ports definitely sometimes there are some um, some inbound some rules which actually uses some the fourth port or some actually required some specific ports to be open so if you are creating a, um, a rules a new rules for example when i try to create a new rule here and you can see we have the option to actually go for a port so a rule that controls connection for a tcp or udp port and here we can actually select is that port a tcp or udp but definitely you're going to actually know the port number you can see it gives an example of what the port number is you can also go for allow local allow all local ports but definitely you want to actually specify a local port number so let me just close let me just cancel then cancel this and here we'll go back again to our advanced firewall and here you can see we have the connection connect the connection security rules at this moment we don't have any rules here you can see we have the monitoring you can see we have the firewall we can actually monitor all our rules. You can see we can scroll down and monitor the firewall rules we have. We have our connection security rules. We don't have any rule. And here we have some security associations. So the main mode we don't have any info here. So let me just close close this and then close this as well. So let's try to also okay, I don't have it but it's open. Close this and this. So so that's all about Windows security and privacy thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video my name is Kelvin Johnson and this is actually part of the Windows 11 tutorial inside out I'm doing this is actually the part 15 of this tutorial so if no if you know what the part 14 or from part 13 or from part 1 to 14 you can go back to my previous video and watch the part 1 to part 14 like in part 14 I discussed about troubleshooting backup and Recovery. So if you've been following on this series of video I'm doing, definitely you're going to learn a lot from basic to advanced level of Windows operating system. So the, this this tutorial gives you a general knowledge of, of everything you really, actually really need, need to know about Windows operating system and now the Windows 11. My name is Kelvin Johnson once more. Please don't forget to, subscri to subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more IT videos and you can also so, uh, watch one of my videos definitely they may be of great help to you you can also leave a comment or any question below and I will, i'm going to answer your question with all pleasure you can also send me a personal email and i'll reply to your mail as quick as possible and please if you're if you, if you don't receive any reply from me that same day don't worry i may reply to your mail i will reply to your mail the following or 
two days later thank you very much and don't forget to give me a thumb up for me taking my time to create this video thank you